Hello everybody and welcome to the third tutorial of our evading firewall section with nmap. So right now, as it says in the title, we are going to try to evade firewall with the nmap scanning tool. Now, in order to actually try to bypass the firewall, there are several things that we need to do. First of all, we need to know from the previous video what firewalls are. Uh, how they work and what is their purpose as we already know they are there to actually filter out different traffic and now we can see how we can actually bypass them with nmap now before the, you actually try to bypass them you need to make uh, to understand one thing is that you don't really know what types of rules are set on a certain firewall therefore you will not really know what you uh, need to do by default in order to bypass it from the first scan that's why it is always important, which I will mention a few times in the future as well. It is always important to spoof from where your scan is coming from. For example, spoof your IP address, spoof your MAC address. So if you get blocked by the IDS, IPS or firewall, you can simply just spoof from a different IP address and therefore it will only block the fake IP address from where the scan was coming from and not your real IP address, for example, or MAC address or whatever you want. Okay, so right now let us get straight to the actual nmap. What I will do right here is I will lower this video. I will open uh, another terminal from which I will actually run leafpad. Here it is. And right now, first thing that we are going to do is we are going to run nmap uh, help menu. So we can see right here that there are several sections split in these options right here, such as the MISC output, then here is the firewall, IDS evasion spoofing, uh, here is the timing and performance, OS detection, uh, script scan, service version detection, uh, port specification and scan order, scan techniques, and so on and so on. Now I think there is two more things. Okay, so here is the target specification and host discovery. Okay, now since we are here uh, to actually first of all bypass the uh, firewall, we are interested in this section right here. So the first thing that I don't see it is mentioned right here uh, is the uh, performing scan with TCP window scan. Now, the TCP window scan in nmap syntax looks like this, so nmap and then dash sw and the w is capital and then the IP address of the target you actually want to scan. Now, why we're using the TCP window scan? Well, it is less likely to trigger a firewall and it is very similar to an axe scan in nmap. Now, an axe scan simply looks uh, the same like this, just instead of the w you specify capital A. In AXCAN, the actual NMAP only sends the uh, AC part of the TCP connection. Therefore, you never really get the full connection to the target and it is less likely for you to actually get detected with your scan. That's why you use these two options. So if you want to check them out in the NMAP help menu, you can find them up here. Let me just see. Here is the SA and here is the SW. So SA stands for X scan and SW stands for window scan. Now there are also different scans right here, which we are not going to mention at the moment. We're going to mention them in a future video. Right now, let us get to the second thing that we can do in order to actually bypass the firewall. So we will set this to be as number one. Number two would be to actually fragment the packets. Now, why are we trying to actually send fragments of packets? Well, it splits larger packets into smaller ones and it's useful against targets which can't handle larger packets. Uh, therefore, uh, we can actually implement it in our nmap scan using the dash F option. As we can see down here in the firewall evasion, there should be a dash F of, uh, option. So here it is, uh, fragment packets. You simply just type nmap dash F and then the IP address of your target. So this is the most broad fragmentation of packets. Now we will see later on that we can actually use different options as well in order to uh, more uh, to specify in a greater detail how you want to fragment the packets, which is this MTU option, which we are going to cover later on. For now on, it is not that important. Now on, we only want to see which options are used to bypass firewall. So. Let's get straight to the third option. And the third option would be to spoof MAC address and to spoof IP address in case there is a MAC black, blacklist or whitelist that's allowed to interact with the network. 
Now, a MAC whitelist basically means they have a file with the specified MAC addresses that are only allowed to access that specific network. Uh, same goes with the blacklist, just the blacklist is a file with the MAC addresses that are not allowed to actually enter that network and that are simply just blocked from that network. Okay. Now, spoofing a MAC address can bypass most of the firewalls that actually have a rule implemented for the MAC addresses. Nmap has basically two options to set MAC address completely random based on the vendor name or you can manually specify MAC. Now, in order to actually change the MAC address, let me just see where is that option. Here it is right here. So spoof MAC, you would simply just type Nmap and then spoof MAC and then after it you simply just type the MAC address I believe which can be simply the AA, BB, CC, BB or something like that, you simply just type any MAC address you want, it can even be numbers, whoops, I deleted this, so it can be something like 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, and therefore, even if your MAC address gets blocked, it will, it will be this MAC address that actually does get blocked by the target, therefore, you can simply just spoof it once again, and you will be good to go, okay? so. Once again, remember that there are two options, random based on the vendor name MAC address, or you can manually specify MAC address just like I did right here. Uh, as you can see in the options, you simply just specify one of these things, so spoof MAC, and then after it, you simply specify either a MAC address, a prefix, or a vendor name. So that is the syntax. Now, the last thing that we can actually try which is a mixture of these first three things, is to try different Nmap scripts. Now, scripts are based on the steps above, so simply scripts are based either to bypass firewall using these types of scans or fragmented packets, and of course spoofing your MAC and IP address, but we can use Nmap scripts to perform the things above automatically, and many other things as well. Now, in order to actually find out where scripts are, uh, we can simply just locate and map. Let me just see right here. Okay, so here they are. Slash user, slash share, slash and map, and then slash scripts. If you navigate to this folder right here, so simply just copy this path, go down here, and cd to that folder, and you type ls, you will see there are a bunch of scripts right here that are not only used to bypass firewall, but there are also some types of vulnerability scanner, uh, some types of scripts that actually allow you to scan better. As we can see, it will give us some additional information about the target. Uh, we can see Samba vulnerability, host map, RPC info, SMB. These are some SMB scans right here. We can see HTTP errors. Now the .nse is basically the extension for the nmap scripts, so don't get worried by that. You can see there are a lot of them, so you can try them out separately, or you can use them all together in a certain command, which I will show you later on. For now, let me just go back to my desktop and type nmap once again. And in order to actually use scripts, let me just find the option for that. Okay, so here it is. It is under the script scan section. So you can use either dash sc, which basically stands for using scripts, I believe, equivalent to script equals default, yes, and map and then dash sc, uh, and then the IP address, or you can simply just specify the script that you want with the uh, dash dash, so two dashes, and then script equals, and then the name of the script. So if you want to use multiple scripts, it says right here, uh, is a comma separated list of directories, script files, or script ca uh, categories. So you can simply, if you want to specify multiple scripts, just type the script name, then comma, uh, or not comma, this is just two dots, I believe. Does it even matter? Try both options and see which one works. And then you specify a different script. If you want to specify the arguments for scripts, you can simply just specify them using this option right here. So dash dash script dash args equals and then the argument for those scripts. But you will most likely not use this uh, at all, at least for now. So there are some different options for scripts as well right here, but we are not currently interested in them. So we will leave that for some future video. Okay, so 
that would be basically about it for the evasion and bypassing of fireball so these are the four options that you should take uh, that you should basically consider first one is the tcp window scan the second one is fragmentation of packets uh, the third one is spoofing mac address and possibly spoofing the ip address which should be an option that is somewhere around here but we will show them later on and the fourth one is basically just mixing up different scripts that will by default automatically do all of these steps above okay so thank you for watching this tutorial and in the next video we're going to see how we can actually bypass uh, ips and ids uh, and as well we are going to see how we can simply evade honeypots but that is the most simple one even though honeypots can be complex uh, we will simply just mention them because we don't really have a honeypot right here to test it on so we'll see all of that in the next tutorial hope you enjoyed this one and i hope i'll see you in the next one bye